Hello, John. Hey, how's it going? It is going good. I hear awesome. you got a big thing going on uh, with the uh, was it with uh, the bundle of holding? Bundle of holding, yes, yes. It, it ends on Monday the seventeenth. Yeah. So those of you listening, it's you're either better hurry up or you're too late. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really, really good deal. Um, you get you get a ton of stuff. And I I think the threshold price now is around $36 or so. But you get you get the main Clement Sector book, you get a character book, you get the system generator, uh, you get some ship guides, you get the shipbuilding book, uh, you get our starport book, you get some subsector books, uh, you you know, and then you get a bunch of the background books. Uh, it's the book on piracy, the book on uh outlaws you know just uh, the alterants which are um genetically altered humans and uplifts which are uplifted animals there's just a ton of stuff here and yeah i'm looking right now and as we're we're doing this it's 3652 is what the what the threshold price is so you get all of that which that's you know well over 200 dollars worth of stuff that you're getting basically for 36 bucks so it's you know it's a really good deal and on top of that we're going to give 30 percent off uh you get a code when you when you purchase it, you'll get 30% off on our website, which is independencerpgs.com. And 10% of what we're doing here will go to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Uh, one of my friends, Vince Campbell, who was one of the guys we gamed with, gosh, all through the 80s and 90s, uh, passed away from a brain aneurysm. And so this is, we we've we, we did this one time before and we sent some money into them and that's what we're doing again this time. And, uh, you know, that's, it's it's a good, it's a good charity. Yeah, that's uh, you know that's something you can strike anybody really at any time. Yeah, it's it's really scary. Um, you know, my my friend, for instance, uh, he was uh, working at a restaurant at Disney in Orlando, and he complained of headache, and they sent him home, and he you know went home, took a nap, and never woke up. So that's that's frightening. Yeah, it's like, no, no other symptoms, nothing else that would have led anyone to believe that something was going to go wrong with him. Yeah, I, I assume, maybe, you know, I don't know, but if you catch it early enough, I'm a, are they able to to uh, reduce the risk of it if they catch it soon enough? My understanding is that they can, yes. That's but, that's what I that's my understanding of it. Yeah, but I mean, for most people, it's probably yeah, I just got a really bad headache. You don't really, probably yeah. Must... I mean, you know, I mean, nobody nobody scans their brain on a regular basis. I mean, you just don't know that something like that's about to happen. Because really, I believe it's just kind of a, a weak spot in a blood vessel. Yeah, yeah. I had had a so we have a we have a um, we have a company doctor. Who does the physicals once once you reach past a certain age, and it's probably the most complete physical I'd ever gotten, in, <laughs> including besides what you what you you probably think I'm thinking, but I was talking about, but they, he actually would take his hand and he shoved it way into my abdomen. Oh, he, he'd check it for aneurysms. Apparently, you get aneurysms in your like your body cavity, and he was like checking organs and like I've never seen anybody as thorough it's like you know it's like you know probably wouldn't hurt to stay i don't know why doctors don't examine you know to that degree anymore yeah 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 i've i've i've, I've had that done what you're talking yeah. about and it, yeah yeah no. that's not a lot of fun not a lot of fun at all <laughs> <It's> like, no <laughs> so so you so you've got this how do you so how does one get on i mean one is i assume you have to have enough you know, material that it really matters. Yeah. But the second, like, how do you get on a on a bundle of holding? Well, um, the first time I got onto it, I actually met Mark Miller, the guy who, you know, is basically the grand poobah of Traveler. Yeah. The guy who, you know, did all of it. I met him at a Traveler con. I want to say this was 2017 uh, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And um, Anyways, he he came over and we had a nice conversation and he asked me if I knew Alan Varney and I said, I don't know who that is. And he said, oh, well, he said, I'll introduce you. And um, that Alan Varney's the guy who runs Bundle of Holding and we set something up at that point. And um, so, 
so, so that's, that was that's a in, secret huh <laughs> yeah I, I guess i don't know uh you know in 2018 uh we ran the we, we did it and then um you know just i completely unexpectedly out of the clear blue sky alan contacted me a couple of weeks ago and said yeah hey, you want to do it again you've got third edition out now you know you want to do it again i said yeah sure <laughs> so here we are so it's really a, like a club with a secret handshake you got to be initiated i, I guess I guess because I, you know, previous to Mark telling me, I had no idea it even existed. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I was really delighted with it. I was like, wow, this is great, you know. So, but yeah, yeah, but without Mark, I, I, I don't know that I would have even known this this was going on. So, yeah, it's a uh, it, it it's a great way for. I mean, obviously based off of the um, the humble bundle. Uh, mm -hmm. But it seems like a it, it seems like it's a win 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 for everybody, you know win 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 I guess so you know they make money you make money charity makes money and uh, then people are able to actually pick up product at a good price and and not only that but it really provides a lot of exposure that's another thing I mean there's a lot of folks I'm already running into people now on our Independence Games Discord that you know, were not aware of us beforehand. They saw it on Bundle of Holding and said, wow, this is kind of neat. I'll look into it. They bought it. They liked it. And now they're, you know, talking to us, you know, asking rules questions and stuff on Discord. And so, you know, it's getting a lot of, it's getting a lot of feedback. It's, uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. I never really thought about it. The, the idea that it is a, um, you know, offense, a, a, a kind of like a marketing in a way uh, as well. Yeah. Very it much. really is. Yeah, very much so. I mean, because, you know, we're getting a lot of exposure to folks who otherwise wouldn't know about us at all. So, and that's good. And, it, you know, it's extending to other products and other things. You know, we're doing Clement Sector and Earth Sector and Rider, the Western. And, uh, you know, so that's, you know, that's exposing those folks to those as well. And so, you know, things are just, you know, going from there. And it's it's actually a really good tool. Yeah, and I think it's definitely, you know, you don't think about things like that being uh, promoting the hobby, but it really does. It, it both, you know, both with new stuff and with old stuff. Uh, a lot of old material, a lot of times, will 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 come back to surface that people can pick up reasonably as well. Yeah. In fact, I think they're. In fact, I think they're doing that with some. Uh, I think there's some old. Uh, well, there's some Goodman Games stuff for Fourth Edition. D &D yes. that was on there just just about the same time, and I think they're <laughs> yeah. doing some. I think they're doing some Mongoose D twenty D and D stuff on there right now. So I'm yeah, just, there's a uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, you know, that they're kind of bringing back from the old days, I guess. Yeah, and it's and I that would be an interesting like choice for for Goodman Games with their Fourth Edition. I mean. They're probably trying to figure out how, from what I've heard, they're probably trying to figure out money, how how many make money off of that that <laughs> turn they were they were handed. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's probably true. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe in twenty thirty two they finally say yes, we finally broke even on this uh, fourth, <laughs> fourth edition fiasco. Yeah, yeah, that that's probably true. That's probably true. And I really wasn't a third edition. I have to check it out. I, I'm not a third edition person, but um, but Mongoose, I knew they were doing Conan and a few mm -hmm. others. I didn't know that they uh, did other. I, I guess I should assume that they would have been. I think I, I actually think that's um, I actually think that's how Mongoose started out with a lot of things is they I had would imagine, you know, they they did a lot of little D20 supplements and things. I think they were doing a thing called the Slayer's Guide there for a while. And then there was something else that was you know, different, different guides. And I think some of those guides are what the, what the humble bundle is. So. Yeah. And I guess really with a lot of that stuff, I mean, if, if, you know, with the, the, um, that's where I'm looking for the, the, you know, the mechanics content may be not what you care about, but there's still a lot of inspirational material or. Oh, sure. Or, yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's what's, it's kind of nice with like with the Clement. So I guess the Clement sector, what, what defines the Clement sector, or at least sets it off from other uh, traveler? Well, uh, it's well, it has a completely, totally different history than what you would normally be used to with traveler. It's it's got a, it's basically a completely different setting. It's kind of off to itself, and essentially, basically, the nations of Earth are still out there. They're still they're they're still around. There's not a one world government or anything like that. It's it's basically just a lot of nation states. And in the 23, in the uh, 2200s rather, in 2210, 
they find a wormhole at Epsilon Eridani, and that leads them to the other side of the Milky Way galaxy, which is Clement Sector. And when they get over there, they discover that all these worlds are much more habitable than the ones that were around Earth. So, gosh, boy, we better get over there, you know, so they start moving people over, they start colonizing over there, and then in 2331, about 111 years later, it collapses. So now they're on their own, and now they must deal with each other and all the things that are going on, basically, as being out in the middle of nowhere with, you know, this frontier, basically, how do we deal with each other and so forth? There's no, there's no large, you know, uh, interstellar polities, there's no empire, there's no federation, anything like this. Uh, it's all independent worlds that are all basically very steeped in the same cultures they came from on Earth. Um, you know, and just different different people came to Clement Sector for different reasons. You know, it's kind of kind of that whole idea of the colonizing the new world where you had people who were going for religious freedom, you had people who were going for with economic ideas, with political ideas. And you just had some people who were like, no, no, that sounds fun. Let's go. Yeah. So there's a lot of that. There's there's no living alien cultures. It's all it's all very human centric. Um, however, there are altered humans, which we call alterants, uh, who are genetically enhanced humans. And there are uplifted animals. Um, so there's, you know, bears and dogs and cats and oh, my. And, <laughs> you know, the whole the whole nine yards with that. So, so yeah, it's a bit different than anything else that's out there, I think. Um, it's pretty much the campaign that I started in around 1989. Um, when I went to college, when I went to college, I, I essentially found a gaming group and we decided that we were wanting to do a science fiction game. I started doing Traveler and we kind of came to a consensus that we didn't like the Imperium. And we didn't really like that background. It was too far in the future for us. It was too much of, you know, it was just too space empire kind of thing. And a lot of, for for us, a lot of us came from the Star Wars, Blake 7, you know, kind of uh, background where, you know, the empire, the big government, that's, you know, the big, the big thing that, you know, right. is bad. You know, so the big empire is bad. And so the idea, we just kind of had the idea, you know, maybe we should change things up. And so they they essentially tasked me with, hey, come up with something else. Oh, great. You know, how am I going to do that? And so as it happened, that that weekend, I went down to the video store and I had just happened to rent Silverado, the Western, and decided, uh, you know, what was watching the movie. And I'm like, hey. That's it. That's what I need to do. Because, you know, they're moving from place to place. They're constantly getting into adventures. And I had already been reading in the the Traveler Varker source book of all places, where it said, you know, that you really could do an 1880s style campaign with Traveler, with the idea that, you know, communication only moves as fast as people. And you could do this. And they said, but don't take this too far. Well, I took it too far. <laughs> and, and so so essentially, you know, I start doing a space western. And, you know, over time everybody's like, well, you know, you know, that's actually not not that, you know, out of whack. I mean, you know, Star Wars has a lot of Western elements to it. Star Trek was wagon train to the stars. And so we kind of ran with the whole space western idea, you know, 1989, 1990, and we had a really good time with it. And so, you know, I I ran this for my friends in college. I ran it at a gaming store when I was in college. This was a been at University of Georgia in Athens. And um, then I left college and I came back to where I live now in Ringgold, uh, which is, like I said, just south of uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I went to a hobby store there called the Royal Tiger. It was in East Ridge, Tennessee, which is just which is a suburb of Chattanooga. And uh, I started running the game there. It basically connected it back with the game that I had been running in college and, you know, had my high school friends come. And so basically it became just this gigantic, you know, whole big giant setting that we were doing. <clears throat> we basically ran that whole thing for well into the 2000s. And, you know, around 2010 or so, you know, um, I, I, you know, I've got notebooks everywhere, 
you know, uh, we bought this house in uh, 1999 and I had to, you know, part of the move was moving all of these notebooks and this e incredible amount of material that I had. And it's like, you know, I really need to do something with this. And as it turned out, Mongoose had, had gotten together with Mark Miller and they had made uh, Traveler um, OGL. And so you could do anything you wanted to do with the Traveler rules, but you can do anything with the Traveler setting, which for me is perfect because right. I was using the Traveler setting anyway, and I'm using the rules. And so this is this is fantastic for me. And so I said, well, you know, let's give this a shot. And so I sort of outlined a couple of the worlds and put it out there to just see if anybody would buy it because, you know, Honestly, I was running a game where I would write up rule. I I would write up all these worlds and I would hand them out to my players and they'd go, hmm, yes, that's interesting, John, <laughs> and pass it to the next person. And so I thought, well, you know, I can't get my players to read it. Why would no. I get anybody else? <laughs> yeah. to read it? You know, so <laughs> you only, or you only get GMs to read it. You'll never get a player to read it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happened, I think. Um, but at the you know at the time I was working really long hours and trying to put together a game on the weekend. And I thought, you know, there's got to be other people that are having this problem. And, you know, one of the things I would have to come up with is what planet are we going to be on this weekend? And so I would make up a planet and I just sort of decided, you know, I've got all these planets I've made up. I've got this, these, you know, all this material. I'll sell it. See if, see if anybody wants to buy it. And as it turns out, there were, there were a few people who wanted it. And so, you know, it was pretty rough at the time when it first came out. It was, it was, it was pretty rough hewn, but, um, as time went on, you know, everything, you know, we continued on and continued on to the point to where we now have Clement Sector 3rd Edition, which is this, as they call it, the big, beautiful book. Oh, yeah. This monstrous <laughs> 675 page thing, which, uh, you know, if you don't like it, you can, in fact, use it to get rid of household pests. Ah. So <laughs> <laughs> kind of almost like the with the 5th edition hero. uh they, they somebody took a rifle to it and see how far it penetrate. You know, I have a friend of mine who runs a firearms podcast, and I have been I have been telling him that I want to see if he can put a bullet into this thing and see how well it goes. And so, yeah, I I I remember that, and I thought, you know, I should do that because I mean, I have I have friends who do this, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> what's for science? For science, yes, yes. <laughs> not not for the fun of blowing stuff up no 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 guys no. aren't like that at all no, no, no. or remember mature <laughs> men <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah yeah i mean you know we're, we're having a great time we've been putting this thing together um you know we've been running since 2011 and uh we're having a really fantastic time and it's great well i think too you you, you talked about how rough you know, it was, I mean, as far as the, I think the, you're mentioning the, probably the production values for the earlier ones, but, you know, those were the time where, I mean, people were fine with that because people didn't have ready access to a lot of, you know, probably the, like we do now, you, you pretty much, if you're going to do something that looks retro, it's going to be, you, you can kind of get by with a little bit shoddy, but it's got to be professionally looking shoddy. <laughs> well, you know, that was the thing. I, <laughs> the the first product i put out um i wrote you know i had the whole thing written up you know i already had notebooks of these things like i was saying so you know it was pretty it was pretty easy to just sort of put it all together write it all up put it together and then somewhere along the line it occurred to me hey wait a minute i need a cover <laughs> i can't draw a straight line how is this going to happen? And so I I went on drive through RPG and I found some stock covers, and I then altered those to to do it. And and I assure you, they they looked like garbage. They were terrible. It was absolutely horrible. But you know, people I guess saw past that and you know in, enjoyed the material. And then eventually, I was able to meet some actual artists who could do fun, fantastic things like this. This is this is the work of Ian Stead, who is just an amazing Starship artist. And um, I'm lucky that I met him because like I said, I, I can't draw a straight line on graph paper, so. <laughs> right. 
Well, I think too, it's like, you know, you, you learn as you go. I mean, it's like, sometimes you can't just come out and especially, um, you know, you, you don't come out with all as a, as a small publisher, you don't start this with all the skills and all the different things you need to produce the type of quality you'd really like it to be like layout, editing, writing, uh, marketing. I mean, there's, there's like the list is nearly endless of all the things you need to be at least somewhat adept at to, to be able to be at least, you know, moderately successful. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's the funny thing. I, I didn't really think about it. And it, it, you know, it, it's such an obvious thing that, oh, wait, hey, you'll need a cover for the book, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. and, and, you know, you'd think that would be just right there. But I, I, you know, I just jumped into the pool, you know, without knowing how to swim and immediately started saying, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, wait a second. I'm going to, I'm going to have to know how to do this. And how do I do this? And um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was certainly a learning experience. That's for sure. Yeah, and there's there's more tools, and I think with social media is much stronger now. And well, in a lot of ways it is. Uh, Twitter just kind of mostly died, which is sad. But uh, but uh, there's a lot of ways of of now you know connecting with with people to 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 do work. Yeah. Which you yeah, know, before, I was before I was, was really word lucky. of mouth mainly, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I was I was really lucky to find some folks who who really knew you know who knew what they were doing and could, you know, that, that I could, I could pay to do these things. Some of these things that I just could not do. Um, one of the other things that I am, I am not talented with is, um, is actually doing starship design and deck plans and so forth. And, um, you know, I ended up meeting this great guy. His name is Michael Johnson and he writes all of our starship books, all of the starship building rules, things like this. We call him the starship guru. And, um, you know, he's a, he, he, he's a civil engineer in Perth, Australia, which is about as far away from my house as you could possibly <laughs> get. And, um, you know, we, we met on Facebook and, you know, and he, you know, he's like, Hey, you know, I, I bought these books. They look pretty good, you know, but you really need some starship designs. And I'm like, well, do you know something about starship design? And as it turned out, he did. And, you know, it's just, you know, he, he's done a lot of really good work for us and we're lucky to have it. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. I I imagine, you know, with a lot of things, we're not, you know, what he's designing, you know, doesn't have to actually fly or work. Well, that's true. <laughs> but it, but it but it has to look it has to look a way that feels real. Yeah. You don't really care how like realistic, like, you know, structurally this, structurally that, but people have to look at it and it's gotta feel right. And and, and there's a certain amount of it's like a combination of both science and art at that point. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it has to have an internal consistency. I mean, yeah. you know, there, there has to be something that makes it look like a Clement sector ship. There has to be something that you could, you know, identify as, okay, well, this is a Clement sector ship. This is the way this works. This is, you know, these things are all, they have these things in common and it has to make, you know, a sort of literal sense and that you know okay there are going to be people who are living here they're going to have to walk down these hallways these hallways have to be so wide you know the rooms are going to you know they're going to need state rooms they're going to, have to have places to go things like this and so yeah it it does have to have that sort of i don't know i guess veneer of realism yeah yeah and i think you know people can probably you know look at that and, and get a, a feel for space and for function uh, that that does come with that yeah and there's always somebody who will tell you you're wrong. Of course. That's so. what the internet is for. <laughs> so you can go out and find people and make their lives miserable because you can. That, that yes, yes. That I and I I'm pretty sure that's actually the 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 motto and tagline of the internet. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> Spread misery and hate. <laughs> Far and wide. Well, you know, what I what I what I really found funny. And I'm still perplexed, even though I'm, I'm not real always versed on the rules. Was on Facebook, you posted, "Hey, Clement Sector doing this thing," and the guy's like, "Why are we putting non-traveler stuff on <laughs> a traveler?" <laughs> oh my god, I'm confused. I bet you you were very gracious. You said, "You know what? The admin said it was okay. That's good enough." I thought, "Well, I'll just push this a little bit further." 
And I realized you were very wise to not engage that person because. Well, I mean, you know, in, in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, you know, the guy, the guy wasn't entirely wrong. I mean, you know, um, you know, Clement Sector is very different than Traveler in a lot of ways. I mean, there, you know, it's a completely different history. It's a completely different setting. It's, it's not connected. There's no Aslan. There's no Varger. There's no Imperium. There's even, even the history of how they got there is there, but there's still the, but we're built on the, on the same rules. I mean, the 2D6 well, is there. The random character generation is there, you know, you know, all these but, things. But he was claiming the, he claimed the mechanics weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that didn't make any sense to me at all, but you know, <laughs> I'm thinking there's a lot of variations. In fact, you could even go to like is GURPS or Hero Traveler? Is that Traveler? Well, I mean, you look at what Mark is doing now. Mark's doing T4 and T5, and yeah. you know, those are built on the multiple dice roll under system, which actually I rather like. But I mean, you know, you know, but it's a it's a completely different system than classic traveler. I mean, it's not even remotely the same. But and my point was, which he didn't seem to think was important, was that if you really go back to the original traveler, there is no setting. Yeah. The the setting is the one you make. So to right. me, the Clement sector is actually just as traveler, if not more traveler, than those playing in other people's systems. <laughs> well, yeah, you well, I, you know, I appreciate that. But <laughs> you know, and <laughs> I I I know that when when we first started out, there were a lot of people, a lot, a lot of purists who who didn't really care for it, and a lot of that went away after I talked to Mark. Mark was at uh, Mark was at TravelerCon, like I was talking about earlier with the bundle of holding, and you know I just you know I talked to him for a little while, and he's like, no, this is good stuff. I like it. It's great stuff. And I was like, oh well, first off, wow, Mark likes my stuff. <laughs> Uh, you know, let me, let me, let me, you know, not go into the vapors here. And, uh, you know, and, and then on top of that, you know, he, he kind of said so. And, um, you know, they, they had a, uh, a panel where Mark was talking and somebody asked the question about the Cepheus engine and all this. And Mark said, no, it's great. It's fantastic. You know, as long as they're not, you know, doing anything, you know, I'm trying to remember exactly how he put it, but it basically boiled down to is you know as long as they're not putting out books full of naked women, I don't care, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And I was like, oh well, you know, all right then, you know. And did they kill any supplements that you were planning? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right then and there, you know. The, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Mark was Mark. Mark is an incredibly great guy. He's extremely generous. He's a very gracious guy, and you know, being able to talk to him just for a few minutes, you know, behind my sales table was just fantastic. Um, you know, here's a guy I've been looking up to since the mid '80s, and um, you know, that was that was a really good experience. And you know, that's the thing. You know, I doing science fiction conventions since around the mid '80s. I've met a lot of really famous people. And I'm happy to tell you that Mark Miller is one of those people that when you do meet him, he's exactly the way you want him to be. You know, he's he's really a great guy. He's really he's really generous with his time. He's he's just a gracious gentleman. And uh, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's exactly and it's exactly the way you want him to be. And he is exactly that guy. Well, I, I just I just find um, and and I can understand if you're in a group. And and people try and drag it in areas that it doesn't really belong. I mean, there we, we all know that there needs to be at least a certain amount of of shepherding. But boy, it just seems like the level of gatekeeping that people participate in, <laughs> and this this like weird canon that things have to meet, otherwise it's not this. If it's you know whether it's D and D or travel or whatever, it's just I just find it mind boggling. When. <laughs> When when I decided that I wanted to do a Western, you know, because I've been doing a space Western for forever. And so I one of the things I really wanted to do was make a Western RPG. And so we made Ryder. And about two days after I made Ryder, I got a email from a guy who basically said that I was tarnishing Mark's vision by sullying it by you know, using traveler rules to 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 make a western and sullying <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I think the exact terms he used were sullying mark's dream 
And I'm like, you know, I don't think Mark feels that way at all, sir, but you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, you know, you don't like it. Don't buy it. <laughs> you know, what, what, what else are you going to say? Well, if you think about, uh, and, and, um, like, I believe, is it, is it, is it dunamis? Is that the, uh, is that the, the, the series that Mark uh, Miller drew a lot of inspiration? Yeah. Yeah. Dumerist. Dumerist. Yeah. Yeah. And I've read like one or so, but I mean, I'm sure that was heavily influenced by Westerns. Oh yeah. 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 I'm sure of it. (laughs) It sounds like, it's like somebody (laughs) poo-pooing. I love rock and roll, but I hate jazz. Like, or blues. (laughs) Like, well, wait a minute. (laughs) <laughs> I, I used to have I used to have a friend of mine, and this was something we teased him about for years. Um, but but he made the statement that he did not like the Beatles, but he really loved ELO. Oh, the hell. and so yeah, yeah, it's sort of the same thing. <laughs> like, I don't understand. I can understand maybe you don't enjoy westerns, but uh, and I think and I think and I've not played much as far as westerns but i think it's definitely an area that doesn't probably get a lot of it probably is a very ripe area that doesn't really get a lot of uh, attention well you know that's that's one of the things that prompted me to do it was because you know most of the westerns that are out there in the world as far as rpgs are concerned are things like deadlands right which deadlands is great deadlands is fantastic i love that game but it's you know it's magic it's you know it, it's western plus something else right yeah and i i just wanted a straight up western and so yeah <laughs> that that's where that's where i took it so do you find uh so i've been doing some marketing uh for my latest project um but i guess the question i'm i'm, I'm wondering is are you finding for your western do you find a a disproportionate compared to other projects ratio of people buying this Western game that are in the UK than your other products. Hmm. I haven't noticed that, but it might be true because I do have, I do have several people in the UK who really like it. So yeah, that, that, yeah, you may have a point. I've got a theory. I think that our romanticizing of medieval England they do the same with our Wild West. You you may have a very valid point there. I, yeah, I I can actually see that. That actually makes a lot of sense. I don't know. Um, I know that when when I was a kid, you know, I was a big Star Wars kid. You know, I I you know I was I was one of the guys that lined up on you know nineteen eighty to stand and see you know the Empire Strikes Back and so forth. And I kind of regarded Westerns as something that my dad and my grandfather watched that were kind of dull and boring and I didn't care. And um, it wasn't until my late high school, early college career that I was starting to explore these things, which is how it is that I watched Silverado at that point, because I had just started kind of going through and watching some of the newer Westerns. And, um, you know, after after watching Silverado, I, I was hooked. And so it really became very interesting to me and um, absolutely got got really hooked on the whole concept of it and going back and watching some of these things. And some of these movies are really good. You know, the, the, the plot lines are really, really good. And, you know, but, you know, sometimes there are a lot of fatal flaws, you know, like The Searchers. The Searchers is such a fantastic movie. The, the plot line is so good that it's only on the second time you watch it that you notice that it's all filmed in exactly the same place. Um, there, there's, <laughs> you know, there's wow. this place in Monument Valley. Yeah. And there's, there's a couple of mesas that are exactly the same, no matter how far John Wayne has traveled. And, you know, he's, <laughs> yes. you know, you know he, he started off in Texas, then he's in Ohio, you know, it's like, you know, then he's in, you know, Colorado and he's in Wyoming, but hey, look, it's exactly the <laughs> same place. <laughs> so, you know, but, but, you know, the actual storyline of that is, you know, is, is a really powerful thing going out and trying to find the child and all this, you know, hey, you know, it's so, so a lot of these things are really good. You know, I th- I think Westerns got better as they went, you know. Um, you know, certainly, certainly I think, you know, Tombstone is just amazingly fantastic. 
And um, I, I have, my, uh, I'm going to say, I think without Val, it, it, that's the one with, with Val Kilmer in it. And yes. um, yeah, I think if you take Val Kilmer out of it, I, I think it's probably, I think it's less so. And, I, I and I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> like I could just watch the Val Kilmer, bit, Kilmer bits all day long over and over yes. again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, and, you know, you know, and, you know, Val Kilmer really leaned into that and it's, it's so good. And, and the, the funny thing is that, that one of the artists who works with me, um, a young lady named Jennifer Leonard, who's a comic book artist and who's done some art for Clement Sector and Earth Sector and Ryder. Um, she's actually distantly related to him. Her, her, her mother's family are holidays and they, you know, they came from Valdosta, which is where he's from South Georgia. So yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of funny. I'm like, well, you know, I'm yeah. getting doc holiday. <laughs> it's <laughs> relative to do, to do art for writer. How great is this? Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, um, and I just had like watched, uh, it was actually probably a few years ago. I watched uh, hateful eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you seen that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's funny is I watched it as doing the treadmill, and I was watching it with a. I was watching it in chunks. Yeah, and I was telling my friend like this is absolutely astounding. He's like, because I don't like I don't like Tarantino movies. Just get too bloody, and too gory. It just it just bothers me. I like. I'm saying, I'm saying, man, Stan, this is not that way. Yeah. And then I hit the scene. I'm like, Holy <laughs> oh, cow! No. I'm like on my treadmill, I'm like. Like just not screaming out of fear, or whatever. Just like I cannot believe what I'm seeing going on right here. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and you know, and I'll tell you, you know, that was that was the thing. You know, some some of the Tarantino movies are really good, and some of them, some of them, you know, are less so. I, you know, but I can tell you that that. It's it's a strange thing to me that that I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and I started watching it, and it ended, and I was like, that was really three and a half hours because it didn't feel like three and a half hours, and I really want to find out more about these. I want these characters to keep going. I want this right. whole story to keep going, and I don't want it to stop. You know, but you know, I get you know, eventually you do have to leave the theater. Yes, yeah, and I didn't. I need to. I need to find. I wanted to see it, but I never did. I never did see it, so I need to find where it's at. It was. It was very captivating to me because I like a lot of that. I I, I like a lot of things about Hollywood history. Um, I'm very inspired by the stories of some of these people, and so you know, it was. It was. It was very entertaining to me because a lot of the Leonardo DiCaprio character is based from Burt Reynolds. And a lot of the Brad Pitt character is based on Hal Needham, who was his stuntman and his assistant. And, you know, eventually is the guy who made the Cannonball Run movies, of all things. Right. And, um, you know, so, you know, eventually just keep in the back of your mind that the Brad Pitt guy is going to be making Cannonball Run in the 70s. <laughs> you know, but, you know, so... You know, just one of those things. And, you know, so I, I'm very interested in that sort of thing. Uh, another thing I watched recently was uh, The Offer on Paramount Plus, which is the story of uh, Al Ruddy and how he made The Godfather and how essentially this guy who had just made Hogan's Heroes moves into making The Godfather, something which is, you know, completely different. Well, and if you think about Hogan's Heroes, how absolutely gonzo, like you could not like. Oh, no these people had these people have only been out of world war ii for this generation been up for like what was it 20 years not even that no uh, yeah 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 i mean it's just it's insane and they're making a comedy about a prison of war camp yeah like, how <laughs> how did this happen who greenlit this who was sitting in a room and yeah. said, said no 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 al i'm telling you the, the best thing you could do for a comedy is a you know is a prisoner of war camp that'll just be great you know, who thought that was a good idea and and yet it worked but yeah. you know it, you know and that's the thing and that's really what the offer is about if you have paramount plus you can get get hold of that it's really really good and to me it was very inspirational to me personally because I, I just love the story of Al Ruddy and how he moved from doing he moved from doing something as outlandish and zany as that into moving something as doing something as serious and heavy as the Godfather. You know, how do you how do you do that? <laughs> you know?
Yeah, it is kind of interesting. It is kind of interesting. Um, and I think too, it's like, you know, you're talking about games and Westerns and I was thinking about, you know, talking about the hateful eight after I was mentioning that it's like, you know, the, your West, it's like, there's a lot of also even like indie games that were really fitting probably for that, um, that, um, would also work like story style games where Westerns kind of, kind of fit in that one shot, you know, let's find out what happens kind of, uh, fast pace narrative style would probably would, would be very apropos as well. Yeah. 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 Michael Brown, who actually does Cepheus engine stuff as well. Um, it did, did a really, did a really good Western called under Western skies, which, um, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm promoting the competition <laughs> here, but, 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 you know, I, Michael's a great guy. I, I love him to death and he, he does a lot of really good work and it's something else to look into. And, you know, people always say, well, you know, wouldn't you rather people bought your stuff than his? And I'm like, no, no, no. I want you to buy both of them because they're both great and you can mix them together and you can have a great time. That's what's you know great about I think with the Cephas engine too it's like uh, or the, anything that's Traveler I mean it's all kind of it all works together I mean it, yeah. it may you know people may have their own swing on on doing things or whatever but it, it allows you the freedom to, to 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 pick and choose. Well, sure, and you know that was something I was telling somebody today. You know you can take you can take the Clement Sector books and if you decide you know no nah, I don't like this guy John setting it's it's crap I don't like it. You know, you decide, but I mean, there's still a lot of value in those books because you can, you can take the book on piracy and, you know, the, the rules on how to be a pirate, how to, you know, the things that'll happen to pirates, what, you know, how pirates operate, you know, the, the stuff in outlaw about, you know, criminal activity and how the mob works and how these things, I mean, I do a lot of research into these things and, you know, which to me is the fun part, you know, I'm a history, I'm a history major. So, you know, this is, you know, research, research, research. And, you know, putting all that out there, I mean, you can, you, you know, some of that, some of that stuff that's in Outlaw, you could use in any game you wanted, um, you know, much less any science fiction game. And you don't have to worry about any triggers you'd have while, uh, while searching Google about how to do certain things. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> right now. Right now, I am writing a badge, which will be law enforcement and climate sector. And just today, I did research on how patrols are done and how to stake out somebody. Uh -huh. And I'm like, yeah, the FBI has me on a list. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, there's, there's no way that I'm not on a list somewhere. <laughs> you, know? you know, here I am Googling, you know, uh, you know, because I did, we just did gear, which is uh, uh, general equipment adventurers require. Which, oh, nice. That yeah, was a, how yeah, long did it take yeah. you to do that? I can't take credit for that. There's a guy named Prairie Burlet who, who works on who, who who's on Discord. And and he said, John, you need a good name for this. And I said, yeah, I'm struggling. I don't have a name for the gear book. He comes what? up with this. And I was like, that's hey. just brilliant. What That is just brilliant. And so we ran with it um but but yeah so the entire time i'm doing you know i'm doing all this research on debt cord and c4 and axes <laughs> you know and different types of guns you know and now i'm turning around and asking asking you know google what it's like to be you know surveilled by the police you know so i'm pretty sure i'm on an fbi list somewhere along the line yeah so i've kind of been hesitant because i was kind of had, had some questions about transponders <laughs> Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. <laughs> so I, I use chat GPT. I don't know if that's going to protect me or not, but I figured that was another layer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understand fully. <laughs> well, I think it was like, I, I wish I remember the Chesterton quote, but he wrote wrote a, a, a number of things, um, but including mysteries. But he just talked about how you had to really like think about the most terrible things to be a, you know, you know the, the mystery writer like yeah. you have to you have to think about committing terrible acts <laughs> like, like <laughs> how would i get rid of a body how would i do this and how would i do that yeah 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 you know the, yeah don't don't ever you know don't ever decide that you need to run a bank robbery heist and then start you know googling you know you know bank bank <laughs> bank floor plans and how to break into a vault <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. 
So one thing I was, and normally, normally this is a full ramble, but there is one thing I also really want to talk to you about, and we talked about this earlier, uh, was also uh, earlier this year, there was the uh, OGL uh, debacle, which was Rizzo the Coast uh, basically looking, for those that are unaware, in case maybe some of the future is listening to this uh, who don't know about this, but they looked at the open gaming license and and looked at a word and and through the magic of redefining common usage of language <laughs> went beyond what the the writer's intent <laughs> and created a new intent and and sought to uh sought to to um what they I can't remember the word dis uh I can't remember. They they they're basically trying to dissolve the OGL um yeah. deauthorize it that's what it was. Now, most people, you know, you know, the D&D community, obviously, because so many things are derivative uh, using that OGL, but the D&D clones aren't the only ones using that OGL. It's the, the Cephas engine is built on the OGL, right? Yes, that's right. Absolutely. So how could that have affected um, the Cephas engine? Well, essentially, the way the Cephas engine works is that, that we're... <laughs> Well, like I was saying earlier when I was talking about how I got into all this, um, I think it was 2008. I may have that year wrong, but but Mongoose and Matt, uh, Matt, my, Mongoose and M Matt, who is at Mongoose, and Mark, who you know does Far Future, uh, they got together and decided that the best thing to do would be to put the you know the rules out so that folks could use those rules and you know build things like well what we've done, and essentially what ended up occurring was that that they decided to use the OGL as the I guess the the method of disseminating those rules and so you know all of the stuff that you were doing when you were when back back in the day when we first started out between around 2011 and around 2016 we were actually connected with Mongoose and we were, you know, doing things basically as a Mongoose third party publisher. So Clement Sector First Edition was actually, you know, it actually said Traveler on the outside of it. Oh, really? Yeah, it was actually attached to to Mongoose's rules. And then when they made their change over with second edition, you know, Jason Kemp came out with the Cepheus engine, which basically took all of the OGL elements of what was out there open game license from traveler as well as the open game license elements from several other games to basically build the cepheus engine and so most of us who were at the time third-party publishers back in 2015 switched over to cepheus engine and ran with that so essentially the thing that allows cepheus engine to exist is the ogl and so if the OGL goes away, there's no Cepheus engine, you know, not not as such. I mean, you know, there's there there were ways to get around this. There were ways to do things. But as such, you know, to use those same rules, it was going to require either an extensive rewrite of everything that we've got out. And I mean, you know, again, it's that thick, Yeah. Uh, you know, and, <laughs> you know. It was going to either require an extensive rewrite to something completely different or, you know, some sort of workout or some sort of arrangement with somebody or something. I mean, it was going to have to do something because, you know, the the legal protections and the, the thing it was based on, um, some might say the legal shield, had dissolved. And, oh, man, that, that's a lot of sleepless nights. Um you know, like I said before, this is this is my livelihood. This is my job. This is what I do for a living. This is how I pay the house payment. And, you know, it it looked pretty dicey there for a while. And, um, you know, I was I was probably pretty defensive about it. You know, when when people on Reddit were telling me that, no, 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 John, you, you just don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, no, no, I'm afraid I do. I really wish you were right. Don't you understand? I truly wish you were right that there was no threat to, there was no threat to you know my my livelihood. But no, I'm afraid you're completely wrong, and there is. It's amazing and, how people with absolutely zero skin in the game yes. can make judgments like, "Well, don't get so excited." 
yes yes absolutely and there was a lot of that and and you know i i so let me give you a little background here because this is this is kind of nuts and as to how it happened for me um my mom got cancer in july of last year and it looked pretty bad it didn't look like it was going to go well and it ended up turning out just fine um you know she had she had surgery it didn't look good you know it was it was tough and so we were basically caring for my mom while we were caring for my mom my wife fell and ruptured her achilles tendon ooh, ooh, and so ooh, ooh. oh yes and your person so, did that yes not good yeah not good at all and so my wife's laid up from about september until about december and so the last part of 2022 was extremely difficult in the Watts household. Right. And so my wife and I decided, you know, she was back up, she was walking around. And so we did, we pick a weekend in January where we're going to get away from it all. We're going to, to de-stress our lives. We're going to, you know, let's right. just forget all the things that are going on. And, you know, you know, mom's okay now. She's okay now. Things are going back to normal. We're all going, everything's going to be good. Why don't we go? There's a little town in Northeast Georgia called Helen. It's, it's German themed. So, you know, a lot of beer and sausages and pretzels and we'll go play mini golf and we'll, we'll, we'll relax. And so we leave on, on Wednesday to have this weekend. And that's when the OGL thing happened. And I'm like, so much, <laughs> so much for the relaxing weekend. And so, you know, come Monday, I was, I was pretty, I was pretty salty. <laughs> so, you know, full apologies to all you folks out there who got the, who got the, the <laughs> who got the stick end, when, you know, but, but yeah, you know, I, I, you know, was not having a good, I had not had a good end of 2022 and I certainly wasn't having a good weekend that weekend, which, you know, had, had been intended to be my weekend to get away from it all and relax. So, yeah, so it, it hit pretty hard. And, you know, we went into negotiations with Mongoose. We're try we were trying to work things out. And of course, you know, you know, Mongoose wants us to go to second edition. I don't want to go to second edition Mongoose. And no matter what we do, as far as if we go to second edition Mongoose, or I just say, nah, you know, no more of this, I'll do BRP or, you know, whatever, you know, that's, that's going to require extensive rewrites. I've got, you know, an entire basement full of these books. It was, it was going to be messy no matter what ended up happening. Um, someone asked me, you know, you know, why, why would Wizards of the Coast do this to you? And I'm like, Wizards of the Coast doesn't even know who I am. They don't, no. have, the, they don't have the foggiest clue who I am. No. You know, we, I said, the problem with us is that, that me and the other Cepheus publishers, we're sitting in a cafe in a nice little town that just happens to be getting nuked. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, we all got together and started trying to figure out battle plans and how we're, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to face, you know, the impending doom that which is, you know, coming down on us? And then Wizards of the Coast said, eh, we're not going to do it. Yeah, that was the strangest thing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was relieved. I was quite happy they decided this. And, you know, but certainly there's the thought in my mind that, hey, they might try that again. So. No, they probably, I think, I don't know. I shouldn't speak about the majority. But I think, I I mean, I think the thought is, is that the, they will, they will deauthorize the, the OGL. Like that is going to happen. I think so. Because they've never stated that they won't. Yeah. And they never even hinted that they won't. I think it'll happen eventually. I think they'll wait till it all, you know, all the fear will die down, all the, you know, all the anger, all, you know, and then I think they'll try to, you know, try to find a way of sneaking through. And hopefully by then, everybody will be prepared for that and ready for it. Yeah. And honestly, I, you know, I, I could be wrong. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, you know, you know, talk to a lawyer, blah, blah, blah. But and maybe I'm naive, but I don't believe what they're doing now uh, with uh, putting it into 
Creative Commons. You know, it may not be the best way, but I think for for D and D people and the things that are happening, it works probably very well for them. It's just that there's there's other people who have built this thing up on this OGL that's not related to creating content for D and D. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's going to have to be something that moves, and I think you know there's 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 a lot of options. You know, um, certainly certainly there's the possibility to move things over to being ORC or even Creative Commons. Um, you know, there are a lot of people looking at different options as to different ways to move. I'm not sure what we're going to do quite yet, um, but you know, those plans are being formulated. Um, you know, certainly, certainly it's become obvious that such a plan is needed because I don't want to, I don't want to go through the sleepless nights that I went through. Um, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to go through that again. And, you know, certainly it's going to be, it's going to be something that we have to be prepared for. Yeah. So, you know, and that really did, that affected me because there's a number of, there's a number of things I published that I use, uh, for old school essentials. Mm-hmm. and and really at this point i realized you know i don't and i put it i use the ogl just to legitimize and be able to use the uh, old school essentials sticker mm-hmm. on my product yeah i don't really need it but there is a as i'm putting out and i'm coming to kickstarter here in a couple of weeks or next I mean, it's next week next week uh that I always wanted to do a Cephas engine, uh, Cepheus engine project, but I like, you know, if I'm going to do that, I better do it like now, because for me, that's the easiest way of getting the recognition that, you know, signaling this is a, a traveler, uh, friendly product. Yeah. And I, I thought I may lose this. Like I, I only have one shot baby at getting this. So I, I absolutely, you know, changed my whole publishing schedule and just it's like oh yeah yeah like, yeah and but you know now it's less of a word but i guess the question is and something that i've not done because i i never considered so there is there is currently if i correct me out this is confusing there is a traveler srd currently active is that is that the case yes yes yeah there there is a well the same traveler srd that they came out with that it was you know published by by mongoose in two i don't want to say 2008 i might be wrong about the year um but they did uh the main rules they did por- well they did portions of the main rules um they did portions of the mercenary book they did portions of the high guard book and i think they did the vehicle book too um you know so those those are out there but there's there's you have to be really careful about just using the straight traveler srd because a lot of the things that you think would be in there aren't. And so there's there's a lot of landmines in that. Um, so you have to be really careful. And that's one of the things that Jason Kemp did. It, basically, Jason Kemp did all of this work for you so that you didn't have to worry about that because he he essentially went through, found everything through the Traveler SRD that was out there, you know, converted that to, you know, well, put that into Cepheus engine. And then, you know, the places where those things weren't like rolling up character characteristics, for instance, uh, rolling up characteristics isn't in the traveler SRD at all. Right. And so he pulled that from another SRD from another, from another company. And, you know, you look in the back of one of my books, you used to get to see that whole long list Um, you know, that he pulled things from, which of course, again, is why the OGL going away is a serious problem for Cepheus Engine because, you know, not only was it built on the Traveler SRD, but it's built on all these other SRDs as well. So, you know, that's the thing. But there is a Traveler SRD out there. And, you know, you could you could build something directly from the Traveler SRD and have, you know, no problems whatsoever as long as you didn't, as long as you, you know, didn't, didn't do anything to, to suddenly go off and, you know, do something a little untoward you know can't have any aslan you know <laughs> you know this right kind of thing. yeah and it's something i never really considered i kind of i think for the cephas engine being it seems like it's a pretty strong community and it seems like a very much a do it yourself uh and i think it's also people who buy travel also recognize you know that but i 
that I also recognize too, that just having this traveler sticker. Well, you know, I mean, that's for some folks that's valuable and it's something they really want. Um, you know, and you can go through Mongoose's TAS program and you can use their, you know, you can use the actual, you know, third Imperium setting. Um, you know, you can, you can do that. Um, there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of, um, extra extra steps and extra layers that you kind of have to deal with on that so if all you're using is the universal world profile and the uh in the uh and then the 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 characters just mm -hmm. stand up your own characters i guess the question is uh you're really probably taking don't even need a, an srd for that true but I guess I never really explored the thought that I could also put a traveler sticker on there too. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, you know, and my understanding is that Mongoose is looking at, you know, kind of changing some of these things. Um, you know, and changing the way the TAS program works, which is a good thing, I think, because there's, there's a lot of problems with it. Um, if you're somebody who just wants to put some small something out, you know, and, and, you know, just add something to the, you know, to the to the list of traveler things out there in the world tas is not a bad way to go it's really not um you know if you want to write just a you know just an adventure that's set on you know wherever regina whatever um you know that's that's great you know you can do that um right. you know and you can you can market it through there you know they'll they'll take 50 percent um which you know is actually I think most of that goes most of that goes to drive through. I'd like to say it's like seven and a half to Mark and seven and a half to Mongoose, and the rest of it goes to drive through, which is you know, it's it's not outlandish. It's not. No, that's the way the the other uh, creative uh, or community creative communities work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not an outlandish thing, um, you know. And so, you know, if that's something you want to do, and you want, you know, that's great. But you know, if you want to do something like what we're doing, you know, you know, if you want to put a setting out there, you know putting it up for TAS is a really bad idea because essentially everybody just gets to share, share and share alike as far as that goes. And so for instance, if you decide you, you, you create a bunch of characters for your adventure on Regina, you know, and you're going to put it over here. I say it both ways because I don't know how you pronounce it. And, you know, I've only been reading Regina, Regina all these years. So I, I go both ways. Well, but... <laughs> yeah, when I was, when I was in, at Edmonton airport, I heard Regina for the first time. I was kind of confused. Hey, yeah, it being a family, it being a family podcast, I won't tell you the joke <laughs> they told me when when they explained it to me. But anyways, the um, but but yeah, the um, you know, if you come up with a bunch of characters, somebody else can come along using the TAS right. program and take take all of those characters and use it. And so so you know, for somebody making an adventure that that might you know not only not be a problem it might even be an honor that you know somebody decided to take your, your these characters and do more with it on the other hand if you're building something like you know clement sector or hostile or you know terror arisen or something like this that's suicide oh uh, you know you're 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 just asking for it and so you know it it does have problems um, one of the other problems that that I know they were looking into was, you know, one of the things that you can do as far as a publisher on Drive Through RPG is you get publisher points. This allows you to do advertising. It allows you to, you know, do the deal of the day sort of thing and all this. And you don't get any of those if you're if you're doing the TAS right. program. Uh, the other thing that they, that really got me, at, you know, about it when I looked at it was, you know. If I put out something with the TAS program, it doesn't say that it's published by Independence Games. It says it's published by Mongoose. No, no, you know, no, no, no. And so for me, it doesn't work. But you know, for a lot of folks, you know, I mean, it's it's not unlike writing a magazine article for JTAS back in the day. You know, you send it in, and you know, people use it and they do things with it. And you know, if if everybody loves your the alien race you came up with, you know, it might it might end up on you know all sorts of things. Well, and I think the thing too, let's say you're to just just forego, uh, you know, the uh, the one bookshelf route, and you're just trying to produce something on your own. Uh, you got all that marketing. Mm -hmm. 
you got to run a Facebook campaign, maybe. I mean, so there's a lot of, and, and there's a lot of costs involved. So yeah. really that 50% people may balk, but you know, it really isn't bad considering you're, you're getting eyeballs immediately. Well, when you consider that currently I'm paying drive through RPG 30%. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, that extra 20, I mean, you know, it, it's a lot of money, but it makes perfect sense. And it, it, you know, and for some folks that, that may be advantageous to them to have the, you know, be able to put the traveler logo on there, be able to put the TAS logo on there, have all that go out there, you know, and, and be able to use those things. I mean, that, you know, for me, it doesn't work, but there's a lot of folks out there that it would work perfect for. Yeah. And maybe, maybe I shouldn't at last minute look at this. I'm, what I'm doing is through Kickstarter. Yeah. It's the only thing that's going to be official, like say only mechanical, is really just the, the world profiles and the characters themselves. I don't think you can do now. I may be wrong about this one, but I because I don't really know on this one. But I, I if I remember correctly, I don't know that you can do a TAS thing and do Kickstarter. No, not TAS. Just yeah. uh, just the uh, use the uh, can use a traveler SRD and have the traveler sticker on it. Oh, oh, yeah. To to have well to have the traveler sticker, you would have to do you'd have to do um, you'd have to do it through TAS. So with the okay, so the OGL does not provide you with any sort of like traveler compatible. No, no. Oh, then what's the point? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, you'd have to to do that. You'd either have to sell it to Mongoose, or yeah. you'd have to you know, or you'd have to put it in their TAS program, or you can contact Mark um you know that was the, that was the thing that got me was you know somebody somebody actually put out something recently for mega traveler because they had just contacted mark and said look you know can we do this and he said you know and he worked out a deal with them i don't know what their deal was but you know there there's actually a new mega traveler book out so i mean it's possible you can you you know like i said mark's a great guy i'm sure you can work something out with him well, my what I'm doing is such small potatoes and is not in the traveler universe. And uh, oh, okay. it, it's probably not the kind of, well, actually not the kind of thing. I just, I know I'm, I'm, I'm such small potatoes. So it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd go set the ascension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's been the plan. So I, but I, I just talked to you. I, 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 am, like, a, I am a Cepheus engine partisan. I, that somebody, somebody called me that. I think they thought it was an insult, but well, I, I was like, no, no. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's me. I, that's who I am. So. so do you, uh, so do you go through Kickstarter or do you simply just sell your books direct to your website and through uh, drive through? Yeah. I've, I've never, well, I mean, I, I buy things from Kickstarter, but I've never used Kickstarter for myself. Um, I, I, you know, I just, I sit down, I, I make it and then, you know, I put it up on uh drive through RPG and I put it up on our website and, you know, and we try to sell it. Cause I'm to, to, so when I look, there's really not a lot of Cepheus engine stuff. That's that I can tell or even traveler stuff that other than the the mongoose stuff but it's um on kickstarter yeah yeah well i think i don't i don't know i think i think some of the cepheus engine folks have used kickstarter in the past i haven't um but i i'm not sure but i think omar has um i'd have to look uh, there may be, I'm not saying there's nobody, but in general, whenever I've searched for a, under that, now maybe they've done it in such a way that a search for Cepheus engine doesn't show up, Could be. but, but I've like, I've kind of was perplexed why that wasn't the case. But. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, there's nothing that would prevent it per se. Oh, um, no. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I never used it because, well, honestly, you know, it, it, it seemed daunting to me and it, you know, and I seemed to be doing all right the way I was going. And so I just went ahead and kept going that way. What you're um, saying is you don't need more stress in your life than you already have. I, I got a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, you know, that was, that was, that was the large part of it. And, you know, it was just, I don't know. I just, I just never used it. Um, but I think there have been things out there, you know, but I, 
I know for a while there were there were some traveler things out on Kickstarter, but some of those I don't think went very well. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. There. Yeah. It's just it's strange. So you know, I guess with some communities or some products, it seems like that's that's been the lifeblood. Uh, it's for like uh, systems like Morkborg and um, and Mothership. Uh, those yeah. have been. I mean, that's been central. I would say. Yeah. Um, without third parties but I yeah think... that's for sure i mean it, it certainly worked out for some folks i know that um you know i i i am one of those folks who has to stay off kickstarter because if not i'll end up backing about five things before i before i leave you know, <laughs> yeah. like, oh that's awesome yeah that, that'd be great that'd be awesome i'll buy that board game and it will sit on my shelf and it will collect dust and i won't have to yeah. dust it and <laughs> It'll it'll never be used, but it'll be awesome. <laughs> exactly, in my mind, I'm looking forward to that day. I know will never come that me and all my friends will spend our weeks playing this game. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. You know, back in the '90s, you know, I, my friends and I would gather at, at uh, the hobby store. You know, or or for a long time, we had a place we called the clubhouse, which we we rented a warehouse um just like a mini warehouse and essentially set up tables inside the mini warehouse and gamed in there and i mean we were doing that every night we were doing this you know this was every day and every thing we'd go to work we'd come home we'd go to the you know go to the mini warehouse and play games all night and if i were if i were still doing that you know a lot of these things i bought on kickstarter would be getting used <laughs> but as it as it is no i i have to do a lot of adulting and uh yeah it doesn't it doesn't work out the, the same way though i i do seem to still buy games um i i there was a meme running around on facebook i think for a while that 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 said that that buying games and playing games are too hot two two separate hobbies <laughs> yes. and, <laughs> so yeah yeah I, I i unfortunately i think that's probably true I think even making games and playing games for me has been been difficult. <laughs> like, yeah, well, yeah, I can understand that as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it can be it can be two two completely different things. Well, yeah, just with work and doing this and trying to find time, it's 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 hard. But one day maybe I'll be full time like you. Hey, it can happen. Uh, you know, it's you know, I certainly I I enjoy it. You know. Um, for years, you know, I, I, you know, I worked as uh, an outside sales delivery guy for an electrical supply company, you know, so I was, you know, constantly moving the, you know, the big, big boxes, big reels of wire and all of this. And, you know, I, you know, it was, it was a pretty good job. I, I, you know, I can't say it was a terrible job, but this is so much better. <laughs> and I really love doing what I'm doing now. So, yeah, uh, so, you know, it, it certainly it can. And I would encourage anybody who wants to try it to do it. I mean, one of the things that got me was, you know, that, that I had the idea to do this three three or four years before I actually did it. And, you know, I, I really did have people going, eh, you don't want to do that. That's that's tough. You don't want to you don't want to go there. You know, that's 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 a tough thing to do. And I listened to them. And eventually I stopped listening to them and, uh, you know, we've, we've done great stuff and, you know, I would, I would just recommend that anybody out there who wants to do this, jump in and do it. Well, I think too, you put in the work early on, even though you weren't doing this like full time. So, I mean, that's kind of also probably key too, that you at least yeah. had something going when you did start, you didn't just wake up one day and say, yep, here I am. We're all <laughs> by my stuff. No, but, but, you know, I did, you know, and I did work both jobs. You know, I I did do both jobs from 2011 until around 2018, 2019. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, I you know, I I I did both at the same time for a long time. In fact, when I first started out, I was actually working three. I was actually doing three jobs. Um, I was I was doing the electrical supply job. I was doing this. And then on Saturday nights, I was the uh, I was the stadium announcer for a minor league football team. So well, that's fun. Yeah, minor league football. It, you know, right now you're thinking to yourself, I didn't know there was minor league football, which should tell you how successful it was. <laughs> but 
but yeah i mean it was a lot of fun i, I really enjoyed doing that as well I, actually i i would have i would have kept doing that for a long time except that when when i first started out it was it was a it was a thing where i was getting paid about 500 dollars a game at the beginning and then it was then it was 250 then it was 100 then it was 50 then it was hey john there's some pizza in the concession stand if you want to take that home with you <laughs> wow yeah and then and then at one point i i, I showed up and then i i kind of had a team that worked with me you know as i had some some folks who were spotters and we were operating the scoreboard and you know we're doing all these things so I, you know my team and i show up and they wanted us to pay to get in <laughs> oh so so it was going to be negative numbers, you know, yeah. and that, that's when I decided I didn't really Do you explain to us how this works. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, this, this, this really isn't, this really isn't going to be uh, making me a lot of money. I think I need to kind of move away from this. So the, I'm assuming you got in without having to pay. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I just, this, it was a, a, like, <laughs> it was, it was one of those moments of, excuse me, I what? No, no, no. I'm the announcer. Yes. Oh, you right. I, I've, and they're I've like, heard no, no, but you have to pay. And I said, no, no. I said, well, I tell you what, let's just go back. You know what? Let's load, let's load all the equipment back in the truck and go home. And then they're like, no, 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 no. And it's like, okay. <laughs> all right. Fine. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. And then you get to explain to your boss why you sent me away. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because then I'm late, you know, you know, then I'm late setting everything up, you know, so. Not fun, not fun at all. Well, I think we're hitting the the time space continuum, John. Well, there is one thing I want to mention before oh, we go. Sure. Um, come uh, on April twentieth, we're going to start the Keith Fry Memorial Bundle, and uh, this is something that all of the Cep a lot of the Cepheus Engine publishers are doing, a lot of the Traveler publishers are doing. We're going to put together this large bundle and we're going to do this for uh, Keith Fry. Keith Fry was uh, the guy who ran TravelerCon and uh, he passed away from cancer a little earlier in the year. And of course, this leaves his wife with a massive amount of bills. And so we're going to put this bundle together. We're going to start it on April the 20th. We're going to run it into May for, you know, Traveler Day being May Day, May 1st. And uh, there's a lot of other charity things going on that you could look into and uh but we're going to do a charity bundle and i wanted to mention that so that everybody knew that was coming and uh really want to help out megan and try to pay off some of those bills that were left behind by keith Silman. yeah very much so that's 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 unfortunate and hopefully yeah uh, that everybody rallies together and, and is able to uh, to uh, generously fund that yeah i hope so yeah, and unfortunately, we're 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 hitting that time in our lives now, John. For people are dying. I, I'm afraid so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, on that happy note, <laughs> 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 and thanks, thanks again uh, for for coming on, John. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. I I really enjoy it.